Good morning and welcome to First Baptist Church Collingwood. Um, this morning I'm speaking from home, um, simply because the Ontario government are asking people to stay in place and that's what we're doing and because we can't open the church at the moment. Anyway, before I share any more, let's, let's pray. Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence with us by your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your Son who died, was buried and rose again for us and is ascended and is coming again for us. Lord, we ask that uh, during these moments that you will minister to us during these difficult days that we might hear from you and be encouraged. Help us, Lord, as we uh, live day by day to live for you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this week has been quite a quite a week, and uh, in many ways, uh, it's just a demonstration of all that is taking place. is is something that we shouldn't be surprised at. It's something that we should begin to understand, and uh, always we need to ask: How should we respond as believers, as followers of Jesus? If you think about the situation in the uh, United States and uh, the incident uh, of the storming of the Capitol building, it's just a sign of the unrest that is felt by many. There is definitely a big divide in many ways. and. As believers, we need to understand that we need to follow God's ways. You know, the early church existed in a situation where the political system was very domineering. The Romans were in control and uh, the believers didn't create an uprising. Instead, they lived their lives. They lived their lives for Christ. They demonstrated God's love and faithfulness through the way in which they met with people day by day. And, and as a result of people seeing their way of life, it's, it changed many people. So I've been struggling in many ways to find out what passage of scripture should I read and where should we begin when we try to answer some of the questions that arise in our minds. When there is conflict, when there is, uh, how can I say, the media installing fear, we always recognize, we need to recognize that we can always turn to God and turn to Him. And, and one of the best places to turn to is the Psalms. And I want to read from Psalm 33. I'm going to read the whole Psalm. And uh, let me pause as I read some, uh, as I read through it. Maybe I'll pause and uh, comment, and then I want to share some more thoughts. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with a harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song, play skillfully and shout for joy. So here the psalmist is encouraging us to sing for joy, to rejoice. And Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. As believers, we need to be rejoicing, knowing that God is with us and he is for us. And so as the psalmist begins, he is saying, rejoice, praise the Lord. Why? What do we have to praise the Lord for in this pandemic? We have so much to praise the Lord for. Where we live, we have homes to live in in this cold. We are warm because we're comfortable. We have many, many blessings we need to be thankful for. And, and so it's always a good place to begin. Oh, maybe uh, when we wake up in the morning, oh, it's another day. No, we should start by saying this is the day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Let's have a positive attitude. Let's put away the negative 
and recognize that God is in control. God is still on the throne. That's one of the choruses I remember from way back when, and God blessed us with the many different choruses that bring an element of truth to us. God is still on the throne, and he will remember his own. He does. And so sing to him a new song, play skillfully, and shout for joy. Don't keep your love for God quiet. Rejoice. We need to be a people who are rejoicing in the Lord. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. Maybe we're questioning that. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. Pause. The Lord loves righteousness. All of us are sinners, but by God's grace we can be made right through Christ. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, their starry host by his breath, by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars, he puts the deep into storehouses. Let the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. Oh, that's where we need to come. You know, we need to recognize that it's the fear of the Lord. Let all the earth fear the Lord. You know, we need to emphasize that we can know the God of creation, the God who brought it into place. The God who holds it all together. Yes, we as people have messed it up. Yes, we as people have, are, many are alleging, are causing greenhouse gases. And the solution is always me. We feel as a human race that we are God, that we're in control of all things. No, we're not. We're in control of ourselves. But we're not in control of the universe or the world in which we live. God is. God is in control. Despite the way in which we consider this pandemic, God is still in control. I believe he is shaking people up. Helping people to recognize that there's a need to be ready to meet our maker. Death is a fact of life. Paul, again, the verse that always remains with me, he says, For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Yes, during this pandemic, many people have died. And people are trying to find ways in, in which to control the, the virus. And yes, we, we are following the instructions that are being given because they claim to be scientific. And so we do as we are encouraged to do. But it seems we need to be on our knees, repenting, because, let me continue on, this psalm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of, of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generations. God is working his purposes out. We don't understand what they are. His purposes stand. His plans are there. His plan of salvation has already been made known to us. That Jesus is the one who came to be our saviour, is the one who enables us to have a relationship with Almighty God and call him Abba, Father. And here the next. It says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. Let me read that again. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Pause. Ask yourself the question. For Canadians, is our nation, is God, the Lord of our nation. 
I'll leave you to answer that. But you know that God has been taken out of schools, the Lord's Prayer, that uh, much teaching is being given, which is claimed to be scientific, which is telling kids there is no God, that things just happen by chance, that uh, this world came about in ways in which we recognize we know that <clears throat> there is a great creator one who has all things under his control praise him we as believers can give thanks for that but blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord the people he chose for his inheritance from heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind from his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. Excuse me, my page is stuck. He considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save. Power. Power. That's what many people seek. Political power. Power over all things and trying to... No king is saved by the size of his army. What the psalmist is saying here that everyone is under... The rule of God. He puts people in place for a reason, for a purpose. In the United States, it seems that it's strange that uh, a man who has been and is currently the president, uh, <clears throat> his life is, there are many, many questions. But during his for years there is so much that has been good that has been done but it is it loses its impact because of his behavior there's so much and so sad we really do need to turn to God and recognize that he is watching over us the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love. Is that you? It's certainly me. His love, his unfailing love. Let me read that again. The eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. There's the promise that God is going to be with us. Whatever we experience, he is watching over us. We are his. We belong to him. Our hope is in him. And in his unfailing love, God's love never fails. Praise him. His everlasting, enduring love for us. Despite our behavior, he loves us. We wait in hope for the Lord. You know, as believers, we know that Jesus said, I'm coming again. He is coming again. And so we wait in hope for him. He is our help and our shield. During these days of pandemic, get to know God. Get to call upon him. Experience the new life that he gives you. You can experience hope. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the one who changed people's lives, whose lives have been changed as they turn to him, as the Holy Spirit comes and transforms us, changes us, gives us a, a different outlook on life. 
we wait in hope for the Lord. Even so come, Lord Jesus. We're living in days that Jesus described as the last days. He said, don't be surprised. These are the beginning of birth pains. And so much of scripture has already been fulfilled. And we see people taking control, trying to silence any who share the good news of Jesus. Whereas we have had freedom to speak, freedom to share the good news, freedom to share that Jesus can change people's lives, that it is described as conversion, just as the Apostle Paul, his life was totally transformed when he met with Jesus on that road to Damascus. May God help us to understand and to share that God is a God who changes lives and gives hope. We wait in hope for the Lord, for he is our help. God is an ever-present help in time of trouble. He presents, he makes his presence with us by his Holy Spirit. When we are born again of his Spirit, he lives within us. We have within us the old nature that needs to be put off and the new nature which is of God. He is our help and our shield. The shield to protect us from the arrows of the evil one. You know, we need to put on the whole armour of God that we might be able to withstand the wiles of the devil, Paul says. Put on the whole armour of God. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. The shield of faith, which is the word of God. We have that for us. We may not understand all of the scripture, but all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. So the psalmist begins with praise. He ends with praise. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. His unfailing love with us. God loves us. He wants us to live for him, to be able to witness and to share testimony of the ways in which he's helped us, the way he's brought us to where we are now, and the way he leads us into the future. He is our shepherd who leads us. He is the shepherd who takes care of us. We don't need to depend upon the authorities. The Apostle Paul encourages us that we should let everyone be subject in Romans chapter 13 to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. So there is a reason why we have the people in power that we have. Whichever country we're in, there are lessons we need to learn. But we need to recognize that the authorities are put there by God. The Romans were in power when Jesus lived on this earth. He didn't seek to change things except for the people to live their lives honoring God loving God and loving each other God is in control and so they were not focused on getting rid of the Roman authorities but they were insistent on living their lives for God knowing Jesus as their saviour and the Holy Spirit as their guide and comforter. And sharing the love with each other. God loves us. He is in control. He 
allows governments to be in place. Sometimes to teach us. And we need to learn. We need to understand that in these days there are many changes that are taking place that are anti-God. We certainly need to be praying for children at this time who are prevented from being in school and, and have to learn online. And the question is, what are they being taught? Uh, when I was in school, it was English, maths. Yes, there was some science, nature. But today, schools are trying to teach kids to live without God. We need to be a people who hold on to the truth, who know that God is with us. I want to read another passage just to to remind us that we as the people of God need to be true, need to recognize that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Listen to what the Apostle Peter says in chapter 1, going into chapter 2 of his second letter. We have the prophetic message as something completely reliable and you'll do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. Pro prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets, through, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. You see, we need to be open to God speaking to us through others, and especially through the Scriptures. There are many people who may now, today, try to interpret Scripture in their own way. Listen to what he says. No prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. Prophecy never had its origin in the human will. But prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. If our nation is to be a nation under God, if we as a people of God, we are not of this world, but we are a holy nation, a peculiar people. We are the people that he has chosen from all nations on this world. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. And Peter says there, there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who brought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. Be aware, and beware of false teachers. Those who deny God, those who deny the sovereignty of Almighty God, he is in control. He did set down guidelines for living, we call the law. And yet, the law was given to us that we might understand where we need to be. God loves us and wants us to be the people he's called us to be. Listen again to what the Apostle Paul says. Concerning the days in which we live, I believe that uh, when he talks about 
be subject to governing authorities. He says this, Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another, for whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be, are summed up in this one command, love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbour, therefore love is the fulfilment of the law. That's exactly what Jesus said. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, as you have love one for the other. This time there is hatred that is evident in so many places. We need to come to recognise that God's love for us. The psalmist said his enduring love, his love. Let me go back to it again in the psalm, Psalm 33. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord. I say, Amen. And so he says, the Apostle Paul going back to that, he says, love is the fulfilment of the law. And do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us behave decently, as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. That's where we need to be. That's how we are to respond. I pray that each one of us will know and experience the love of God. We'll recognise that he is in control. During this pandemic, we can turn to him, but we need to pray on behalf of the nation who's turned away from him. The many who are teaching there is no God. They're teaching fear, but not fear of God, but fear of humanity, fear of each other. Let us clothe ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ clothe ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ allow him to be the one who leads us, who guides us who helps us through he came into the world for us he died that we might live he rose victorious to give us hope he's ascended and is in the presence of God but is coming again are you ready for his coming? Do you know him? Have you had your sins forgiven? Have you come to the foot of the cross, repented of your sin, turned away from it, and experienced the new life he gives? You know, there's a song that I want to play, and it is, uh, we are called to be God's people. And I trust that uh, you will be able to sing along as I find a way of uh, sharing it. Just a moment.
Thank you. I pray that that will be a blessing to you and that uh, you will be God's people, bringing evil into light. Let us seek the courage needed, our high calling to fulfill, that we all may know the blessing of the doing of God's will. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the words of that hymn. And we are called to be your people. Yes, whether we are, we are Canadian, British, whatever nation we come from, we are yours. We are not of this world, but we belong to you. We pray that we might all put on the Lord Jesus Christ, that we might experience your love for us, that we might share your love with all we meet, that during these days of pandemic that we might be a people who are able to bring peace and bring hope. Help us, Lord. Help us to find ways to, to share your love, that others might come into a relationship with you, that during these days of epidemic, pandemic, that, that we will hold true to you and you'll help us to bring comfort to the many who are sorrowing. We pray for each other. We pray for every member of the First Baptist Church in Collingwood, for those who are not able to join us by way of the internet, by way of these messages. We ask, Lord, that we might find ways in which we can reach out to them, not just by phone, but whatever we can. So help us, we pray. And we commit them to you. We pray for Carol Miller, Lord, with, that she might know your healing touch and for her husband Bob and for others, Blanche and, and Collie and, and others who are not able to join. We ask, Lord, your blessing upon them. So help us. May we know and experience your love. Be thankful for your grace and your mercy towards us. And in these days, keep looking to you. For we know you, the Almighty, the creator of the heaven and the earth, as our Heavenly Father, Abba Father. And so bless us, we pray. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.